Greetings, everyone. You're listening to Africana Studies with Professor Mainu and Pim on the BlakeRadio.com network. And today I'll be discussing the topic of classical African civilizations. Now, classical African civilizations is a very important topic within the field of Africana studies. And in fact, the classical African civilizations provide the, the, the foundation for the knowledge in the discipline. And this is, uh, this is very important. So you want to take notes on this because this is, uh, this is a, a crucial topic that has tremendous implications. And in the field of Africana studies, this is a discipline that really affects our lives because yesterday influences today, and tomorrow is definitely influenced by today. So there's nothing in the current world that is not based on the actions and the conduct of people of the past. So one of the most important things about why we study African history and culture is because it helps to illuminate current thought and behavior. And, uh, and that helps to put things in perspective for us. And the discipline of Africana studies, as we've shared in a previous program, goes back to the early 1800s. But it has uh, become an a academic discipline within the university system as a result of the great work of William Leo Hansberry in the period of, of the 1920s and, and beyond. And today we have students and people uh, now across the African world that have benefited from the work of people like Hansberry and other great thinkers and scholars and writers such as Sheikh Anta Diab, the great, Sen- uh, the, 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 uh, great uh, historian from Senegal and great researcher. And the discipline has continued to move forward. Now in this program we're going to discuss classical African civilizations and really give you the the true value of why these these civilizations must not only be studied, but these civilizations must be understood on a level in which we have to uh, apply the 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 uh, the knowledge and the wisdom and insight that comes from these classical African civilizations. Primarily, we're speaking about those in the Nile Valley, and we're going to cover uh, the details of that. But first, we, we need to cover some definitions. One of the the important things to 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 recognize that the, the the phrase classical african civilizations is upsetting to many people it is actually a revolutionary phrase because when we speak about a classical civilization almost a hundred percent of the time the assumption is if we're speaking about a classical civilization that it refers to europe and more specifically to the cultures of greece and Rome. So if you look at at uh, universities across the nation of the U.S. and and, and definitely in Europe as well, uh, what we find is something very consistent, that if there's a classics department, then the classics department almost exclusively deals with the experience of Europe and the experience of Greece and Rome. Now, when I, I find this very strange that in classics departments across America that the exclusive focus is on on Europe it's on Greece and it's on Rome and that other cultures are completely ignored as if they have no significance so some of you might say well professor may knew what is the issue here of a classics department focusing only on Greece and Rome well here's the implications of that to focus only on those European societies and not the classical cultures and civilizations of Africans and other people, there is a dastardly omission that takes place here. Now, first of all, the term classical, what do we mean when we use the term classical? Many of you are aware of of the terms uh, classical music, classical art, classical dance, or classical theater. So, But we don't always ask the question, what does the word classical mean? really mean? Well, the word classical, in its true sense, means anything that has permanent or lasting value. Classical means the highest rank, the highest order, the highest class. It means the prototype. 
the highest example. That's what classical means. So when you have a classics department that focuses only on the experience and supposed contributions of the Greeks and Romans to basically European cultures, then what that is telling the rest of the world, people of color, is that you have no contributions that are worthy of study. So if you look at these great institutions, such as Stanford and UCLA and, and so many other, uh, you know, Harvard and a lot of the other uh, classics departments around the U.S., it's the same reality, that there's a exclusive focus on Europe to the exclusion of everybody else in the world. And so the classics department, the departments are misnamed. Now, if, if, uh, if these departments were called the classics department, uh, or, or I'm sorry, the European classics department, then nobody would have an issue with that. Because if you're making it clear by the name of your department that you focus mainly on, on Europe. So if you call it the European Classics Department, fine. That means you can defo- focus on Europe and no one has an issue. But to focus all of the courses, all of the textbooks, and all of the discussion on Europe and those things from Europe, this is a bogus representation of the, uh, of the contributions in the world. So everybody has, or, or not everyone, many cultures have a classical period. There's classical Mayan civilization. There's classical Indian civilization. There is a classical Chinese civilization, and there's certainly a classical African civilization. In fact, there's a classical Islamic civilization. Classical means the highest rank or class. So everyone has, or many cultures have a classical period. So the classics departments systematically ignore and exclude cultures that were greater than Greece and Roman culture. There's nothing great about the Roman culture. There was a, a movie that came out not too long ago called Gladiator. And I don't go to the movies very often, but I did go and I saw Gladiator. And one of the things about that movie that came out uh, maybe um, in, in 2001 or so is that the movie is historically accurate. It actually does portray the absolute savagery and barbarism of the Romans, where they would take enslaved people and, and the, the, the choice... Uh, in, enslaved people were those with the darkest or the blackest skin because this was a a phenomenon to the Romans. They were fascinated by black-skinned people. So they would enslave black-skinned people and, and, and put them in the Roman arena. And they would be in there with wild tigers and lions and beasts that would be in there hungry and looking to rip apart anyone in the arena. And not only was this a, a savage a sporting event that took place, but it was a spectator sport where people will come and actually witness people being ripped apart. What's civilized about that type of conduct? This is outrageous conduct that has nothing to do with civilized behavior. And then to have people be in the audience, in attendance, to witness this type of foolishness. And not only that, but the Romans were a a formerly nomadic people. In fact, in the the mythology of the Romans, in their mythology, uh, with Romulus and, and, and Remus, they were, according to uh, you know their tradition, raised by wolves in the wild. And so they don't have they don't claim to have any divine origin. They don't claim to have any great origin. They indicate that they were raised by wild wolves, and that these wolves. Raising Romanus and, and, and Remus, they formed the foundation of the first couple of people in the Roman society, and that's how their civil their their culture was set up. It was a wild culture, where not only was there enslavement of people as the basis of the Roman economy, but more than that, women a- had absolutely no rights on any level. You you show me a Roman uh, queen. They didn't exist. There's no such thing as a Roman queen because women had no rights. Women were completely disrespected. And yet, this is being passed off as some classical civilization. And not only that, but the same is true of Greece. Here you have people that were nothing more than a group of people engulfed in constant and consistent and ongoing 